and what? it's not really my fault. Ah, uh, yo, hey, ha! Uh. Ah, ah! Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> I'm your lead anchor, A. Scott McGee, and I'm also your lead anchor, A. Scott McGee. <laughs> uh, no, just kidding. Good evening, bleepity bloop bop. <laughs> this is the Southern Oregon News Network. Indeed, it is. This is the most southern you can get for your news networks in Oregon. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, was this was the Southern Oregon News Network, and now it that's not our set. is a ocean view that's, of some... Oh, that's trippy. That's, why are we, whoa. Oh, man, you know what this reminds me of is Rollerball. Did you ever uh, see that one? This is totally just, not our studio, though. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. Hell? I kind of like this. I can get used to this. A lot uh, of things are going on here in Southern Oregon. Oh, uh, there we go. <laughs> oh, shit. There we are. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of disappointed. All I liked right. that previous set. Welcome back. Uh, we were some sort of airport thing, and now we're doing fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Sorry, folks, we're not really at our sharpest this evening. Yes, if you have been lucky enough to survive this long, today is April 15th, tax day. Oh, and if you're anything like the rest of us, you've been up late wondering about your life choices and figuring why you spent all your money back when you were having fun. I'm exhausted, he's exhausted. Southern Oregon, you're probably exhausted too. That's why I'm drinking this shit. Oh, <laughs> smells like a burning Jolly Rancher factory. It kind of does. It kind of does smell like a burning Jolly Rancher factory. On with it. In local news, a new promotional campaign for Southern Oregon University is stirring up a bit of controversy. Mm. Check out this clip and see if you can spot the pandering. The pandering. At Southern Oregon University, our people, our programs, our place blend together like a family. With over 40 majors and a commitment to inclusion and diversity, once you become a Southern Oregon University Raider, you're home. Nice try, SOU. Your ad didn't sell me anything lesbian-y. <laughs> Why don't they just come out and say it? We have gays and lesbians, but don't worry, they're white. <laughs> Good. That's comforting. <laughs> And inside sources have revealed that at least two of the couples in the commercial were paid actors. I also heard that the sisters were, wait, actually sisters that the girl's kissing, whatever. Uh, everyone in the commercial was white, except for, no wait, they included that one gay person of color in there. See if you can spot them, folks. Yeah. In fact, uh, the what, PR brain trust of the university uh, inspired a reporter from the alumni YouTube known as the Shift... Shape shape shifting the shape shifting raccoon. Ah, check it out. Check that raccoon. Diversity. Just the thought of it makes these white people smile. We believe everyone works best when they work together, even if they're just standing around. Just like we enjoy varieties of foods, we enjoy varieties of people, even though we can't eat them. That was nice. They, when they when they slowed it down, I actually did see the uh, the gay person of color. Uh, mm -hmm. The place otherwise is chock full of white people. I think they should talk about the uh, the wildly skewed ratio of women to to men. Isn't I've heard something like five to one women wow, to men. Wow, really? I mean, that's something I'd be advertising if I wanted people to come to my university. That would be front page for me. I still have flashy memories of being fourteen years old and wandering around the streets and being like. Yeah. There's hotness everywhere. We get it, SOU. You're all about this diversity and inclusion and all that political correctness a 30-second can, spot can shake a stick at. A big stick. But when we see headlines like this one saying SOU losing $2.5 million lawsuit for defrauding its workers. or hiding their board of trustees meetings from live stream. Burn. Or running their athletics department at a $1.2 million deficit. Double, triple, burn, burn. We have to start to wonder whether the university needs to spend less time 
genuflecting, which I'm told means it's, it's a bow and kiss and scuffle scrape thing. I'll just say that. Yeah. At the latest <laughs> identity politic, uh, p political identity trends, maybe Trend we'll say. burn. Burn. And more time balancing their budget and keeping their doors open. Budget burn. Or, by all that means, just continuing on your merry way, making the blue hair crowd uncomfortable, and pat yourself on the back for how trendy you are. Trendy burn. It never ends well for people who change their identity to satisfy others, doesn't it, Gordon? Ah. Uh, well, speaking of accountability, our uh, fair city fathers here in Ashland decided they wanted to at least pretend to listen to the public concerning their proposed ban on the smoking in the downtown area. This public tobacco smoking prohibition could cover the downtown exclusion zone where they already have laws preventing unlicensed dogs. Uh, sitting down. Sitting on the sidewalk anywhere. Imagination. You know, yeah, looking like a hobo in any way. Yeah. Uh, the Anything, boogeyman. Yeah. Uh, and other crimes that frighten children and cause tourist wallets to snap shut. Did you see that? That was pretty good snapping. The city turned out in force as a show of support for the public opinion that was overwhelming. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the March 16th listening session about this, the proposed smoking ban ordinance. And um, we're here at the council chambers with, <laughs> with not a large crowd yet. In fact, Andy, I don't know if it would be overstating it to consider you a crowd, but... Um, I'll do my best. So let me just set a little bit of the, of the background here. The, um, first of all, the smoking ban ordinance codifies the Oregon Clean Air Act, which allows the Ashland Police Department to enforce the provisions of the act, which is otherwise enforced by local public health departments and property owners. In other words, by incorporating the state law language into our municipal code, the avenue of enforcement shifts from local public health departments and property owners to the Ashland Police Department. Secondly, the ordinance prohibits smoking or the use of inhalants on downtown sidewalks in the plaza and Chautauqua Square and in other outdoor spaces that have a floor and a ceiling. I, I just think you should shuffle your papers. I love it when you shuffle your papers. It just makes me feel good. It's a useless time-wasting thing that don't, you can't, <laughs> you can't advertise. Oh yeah. Right. <clears throat> ah, yes. Uh, to hell with the asthmatics. His Majesty the Mayor says all inhalants are banned. All of them. <laughs> Having an asth asthma attack? Run to the edge of the smoking exclusion zone or you'll get a ticket for your inhalant. For your inhalant. A brave anti-smoking advocate, the only resident at the meeting, by the way, Andrew Kubai, stepped up on behalf of those to speak for all of us, saying that this is a pointless law aimed mostly at people who aren't even from here, or all of the people that hang out downtown. I feel that as a city, Ashland needs to guard against um, legislating lifestyle. And I feel that an ordinance like this goes into that sort of a territory. We're basically telling the world, or everyone who's here, is that we feel that you're lifestyle isn't right or that you could be healthier and that we want to have everything as tidy as possible and unfortunately we don't really live in that sort of a world and to ask people not to or to expect people not to have a cigarette if they're walking down a sidewalk I think is going a little too far I don't support it I don't think that people should smoke at all you know what bothers me is that you haven't even asked why I have a band-aid on my hand. It's mostly because I don't care. Well, shit, but the answer is because I put a drill in my hand. Guess when I did it on my birthday, which you would know because you didn't come to my party. Guess why you didn't come to my party? It's not because I didn't invite you, it's because you just chose not to hang out with Gordon. Why would you? I'm only turning 35. It's all right, I don't mind being old. The reason I didn't come, because I knew I was gonna be forced to attend this little pity party. <laughs> You want to see the stitches? It's pretty gross. The public, prepare yourself. 
In other crime and punishment news, our local election season is heat heating up with a primary between three Republicans and a Democrat, seeking the position for number two seat on the Jackson County Board of Commissioners. Well, you might be bored of the subject already, which I know I certainly am. I'm so glad we're doing this story. These folks do wield a lot of power locally, including the administration of that happy little place in downtown Medard, 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 known as the county jail. Hopefully you'll never go there. Again. <laughs> when the subject of jail overcrowding comes up at a candidate forum sponsored by the League of Women Voters, here's what one candidate had to say. Okay, next question from the audience, and this rotates back to Gordon Chalstrom in the lead position. Uh, what solutions do you have to a growing incarceration rate? I'm sorry, did you say growing incarceration rate? A growing incarceration rate, more people being We have bars. a shrinking incarceration rate. We're letting out people. It's called book and release in this county. We need to grow the incarceration rate drastically to protect everybody in here. And I would just like to correct some previous statements. The courts have already ruled. If you have a prior drug conviction, the state can drug test you before you get aid from the state. I'm not saying random, I'm not saying everybody, but if you have a prior drug conviction, drug use history, we can legally UAU. Now with regards to uh, the, you know, the uh, incarceration rate, we need to expand our jail capacity. We need to build a new jail, but that's a long-term goal. Did that guy just say increase the incarceration rate? Damn. He did. That was shady. That was a shady robot. Well, great. Now they got to pay for that shiny new jail somehow. Not enough of that around here. That guy was a robot. I ain't killing. I think his audio was off too. <laughs> well, it shouldn't matter if it's a Yermalik. <laughs> nope, go for it. I believe the quote one. is, it shouldn't matter if it's a yarmulke, a hijab, <laughs> or quote, a silly fox hat, yeah. as the man at the DMV wants to call it. Or at least those are the ravings of a lunatic who feels the need to wear a fox hat in his driver's license photo. A Portland man, <laughs> I should mention. Figured. Figures. Jay Bishop wears a cable hat that resembles an orange and cream fox head. If that's the only tenet of his religion, I say shit, sign me up. It's more religions that you wanted to wear fox hats, the world might not be such a freaking animal hating nightmare. Yeah, nope. Even a blind pig. Um... Insert pig joke. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Speaking of nightmares, do you ever wake up at night in a cold sweat to dreams of a black and white radioactive Japanese fish uh, destroying your way of life? Holy crap, man. That was like, you were like inside my head for a second. Yeah, that's pretty much how I sleep. Well, when the entire dock washed up from Japan on Agate Beach near Newport, scientists began to notice invasive species. A lot of them, creepy ones crowding all over the beach. It appears that no breeding population has yet established, but uh, scientists fear a new paradigm for species migration involving our radioactive trash may become a thing. Did you notice that that beach was on fire in that photo? Like the water was oh. on fire. Oh yeah. That, wow. That's, that's not a beach. That's the middle of town somewhere in Japan. Oh, that looks shitty. Back in the day. God, that looks like those guys just had a horrible time. When it was burning because of tsunami. Well, Japan is a beautiful place to live, but there's lots of problems with it, including problems that they've just shared with us. Scientists have found 200 species of plant and animal life cling tenaciously to a dock that is 66 feet in length and 19 feet wide. This startled scientists and uh, these two reporters, because, dang. And we're pretty easy to startle, too. Yeah. We're kind of high strung. Don't sneak up on us. No, Seriously. certainly not. We pee. I might kill you. I might pee. He'll probably be peeing. <laughs> anyway, scientists uh, were startled. Yeah, and as we, so were we. Yeah. Uh, and we, uh, believe, we previously believed that these organisms wouldn't be able to survive such a long journey at sea, which uh, just goes to show you that uh, life uh, finds a way. 
Wow, yeah. That's right. I, for one, am glad that that guy showed up on our report of team. It just lends credence to my theory that I have that uh, events like Fukushima is what actually creates radioactive Godzilla types. Let's hope not, Gordon. That would be terrifying. That would be terrifying. When Godzilla attacks you, which I think is fairly inevitable, you're going to want every member of your family to be ready. What? Yes. Yes. So ready? <laughs> well, I think there was a quote there, didn't get to it. That's all right. Let's talk about girl power. According to the National Shooting Sports Foundation, which I think is a fairly stupid name, but I am biased, women are the fastest growing group of gun owners in the United States. Uh, please don't send us ha hate mail about his uh, Certainly, no, my, my narrow opinion should we, not represent uh, our yeah. situation. I, I just think they could have thought of a more funny name like that's, that's true. people toting giant handguns. Nope, I'm super tired, I got nothing. You gotta remember the acronym. You might call it girl power. Women are the fastest growing group of gun owners in the U.S., according to the National Shooting Sports Foundation. And this is typically their weapon of choice, a semi-automatic handgun. Lightweight, accurate, so and so simple that practically... Oh, oh, talk. oh wow. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. You know what I also like is her jacket, actually. Yeah. I was just thinking about that. Not, They're wearing some stylish stuff. They really are. It's the combination of murdery and stylish is pretty intense. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that one looked a little. Oh, horsey, and you though. see some of the painted guns in the background there. I wonder. Is it? Oh, the pink, uh, pink painting there. Yeah. That seems to be popular. And camo. They can do whole wraps. You know, I always wonder about the pink camo. Like, what are you supposed to be blending in with? You know, like a like a Muppet factory or something. I think or? it's more about standing out. And blending in. Oh, you're, you're making a statement, and that yeah. statement is that you're a soldier of Muppet Town, and you want to be feared somehow. Oh, I was thinking that was something deeper, like this is me standing out of the camouflage that is mankind. Oh, the camouflage crowd. Oh, yeah. I don't like, know if they're actually that deep about it or not, but uh, that's it's where like I an anti-camo camo statement. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's you know some crazy. Oh, I see. These are. Uh, yeah, for, cute for purses guns. full of murder. Yeah. No purse, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a difficult world that we're heading towards uh, because to me that looks a little bit like one of those, what are those mm. cute little leg uh, things that they do when they're we're getting married, the little stocking, uh, what are those garter, called? Garter uh, belts, yeah. Garter belt, yeah. It's like a murder garter belt. Unlike a normal garter belt, this one spells doom for those around her. Ah. So what about the question of more women being shot uh, women being more likely to be shot with their own handguns. Is that a thing if, that, if like, a, a rising trend that's actually happening? Uh, it's a statistic. Oh. Is it true or not? I don't know. Well, it doesn't I'm matter. We sure. just report. Well, we make stuff up whenever yeah. we want to. Spout lies. My question is, do the women prefer the pink guns, or is it a, is it a black, uh, sort of a standard, black gun standard still prevalent? Does anybody have any information on that? I, I believe they actually prefer flat black, which... Flat black? Well, I mean, you want shiny black? Are you saying women prefer black? <laughs> anyway, it seems like uh, more women than ever are actually taking up arms. They are, so much so that there are now gun stores that could uh, cater specifically to women, like the uh, She's a Pistol in Shawnee, Kansas, which we should stop a moment and talk about because... Uh, Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about yeah. Shawnee, Kansas. Well, uh, apparently four guys thought it was a good idea to try and rob gun store. <laughs> Never a good idea. Run by women for women, because, wow. I don't know, easy target, uh, no. I suppose. Let's just say it didn't end well. Yeah. And uh, the store is not reopened since. Uh, yeah, I've heard a little bit about that. There was a, a pretty bad shootout, right, ultimately speaking. Yeah. I think picking on women's gun stores is, is like as silly as like picking on a midget that has a pocket full of hand grenades. You know, just because they're small doesn't mean that they're not stuffed with hand grenades. I'm scared of midgets in general. Yep, oh, there's oh, that there story, that's the picture. Yeah, that's what we're yeah. looking at. 
Oh, yeah. Hey, speaking of uh, uh, boring and also scary, if you've never been to the small town of Forest Grove, Oregon, don't go. There's nothing out there and nothing interesting actually comes from there. Hey, my, my grandparents are from Forest Grove. Uh, oh, okay. That didn't disprove my point at all. Although, actually, I was remembering, wasn't Forest Grove the one with the creepy sounds like the trumpets from heaven that we were talking about beforehand? Oh, yeah. yeah. I whatever happened. I don't know. You know, you think people would make more of a thing about that because it's mm -hmm. like uh, mysterious uh, trumpet noises uh, resounding all over Earth from the skies. Uh, nobody cares. Not a thing. Yeah. We it, should put in some effort to follow up on some of these stories. Yeah, we never do. We never yeah. do that. Hey, uh, I wanted to share something particularly boring with you that I printed out, but I thought was funny as hell, and you might have even stolen. It's um, Forest Grove. They have their own police oh, yeah. log. Oh, you oh, did yeah, steal yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, police log. Here we go. Here we go. I wanted to share this from you. This is between April 3rd and April 9th. A few choice gems from Forest Grove here. Uh, police received a report that a man in his housing complex was drunk and screaming. Officers found the man who was very intoxicated and wanting desperately to go to jail. The man was told to quiet down and stay inside, but eventually he got his wish and they took him to jail. Is it news? April 3rd. That's news. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, further on in the day, they said a concerned woman was uh, asking whether she could spank her daughter, and the officer said that she probably shouldn't, but that it was fine with him. April 3rd, Forest Grove. On uh, April 5th, it looks like a man reported several hundred dollars missing from his wallet, along with the woman he had invited to spend the night with him at his hotel room. I'm pretty sure that's that was a hooker guy. Yeah, that was a hooker, and also she had to get paid, so no surprise uh, for you. Yeah. I would like to see if the man was later arrested for soliciting a prostitute. Soliciting a prostitute! <laughs> A new homer, uh, homeowner, this is one of my favorite ones, a new homeowner called after finding a mysterious uh, bump in the, in the soil on the ground, mm. got a cop to come over and dig in the spot, and the officer assisted in the evacuation and found only dirt. Hmm. That's one board cop. That is one board cop in Forest Grove, the point. How about the mysterious man that called after coming home from vacation and found that he had left his own television on? Mm. April 7th. Sounds like you either have a pol poltergeist or a cat. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, yes. Oh, wait, a cat. Do the cat joke. Oh. <laughs> wait, I'm going to do it. Can I do it? I'm going to steal this joke. Pretend it's mine. 70 per Actually, I don't even think this is a joke. 70% of poltergeists uh, linked to cat owners. No, I, I messed that Just up. totally Forget it. it. Yeah. Okay, what's the actual yeah. thing then? I'm going to say that... If you believe you have a poltergeist in your house, it's a pretty good chance it's your cat. 70% of reported poltergeists actually came from cat owners. I feel like we've tried too many times for this not that funny joke. No, not that funny yeah. at all. Moving on. Yeah. On April 8th, a caregiver got bitten by a resident because the resident felt that the caregiver was being disrespectful and bit them. Forest oh, Grove. That makes sense. Yep. A man reportedly bought a cellular telephone at Goodwill, and the phone told him it was stolen. More live news from Forest Grove coming to you soon, as well as a list of things that you didn't know that you had to be afraid of. The good news is, is that there's a few things that you didn't know to fear, and now you're going to get informed on it. For instance, what happens if a hornet rides on the back of a bee? I don't know. Or maybe you're driving, and your car is the only one that happens to be completely air sealed. You could die while driving because you have no oxygen. Your car was a fluke, it was made in the factory, it's airtight. You could die. For more things to be afraid of, tune into Fox News Nightly. <laughs> you came out of left field on that one. Do we have anything else on the teleprompter? No? Oh, yeah we do. Oh yeah. Everyone freaked out a few weeks ago when a few missiles were found on a commercial flight headed for Portland. Well, I'd go ahead and say that that's actually a little bit concerning. That's a good reason to freak out. Yeah. Indeed, after a bit of investigation, it was realized they were referring to the far more populated mecca of culture, Portland, Maine. Wait, Portland, Maine is a bigger mecca of culture than Portland? That's just slanderous. Well, yes, with a population of 66,194, and most notably a hospital built in 1854, Portland, Maine is 
clearly a, a bastion of, yeah. of human experience there. Clearly. Well, the missiles were found in a Serbian airport bound for Portland, Maine. However, the U.S. Department says that they were dummy rounds used for training. Wow. The uh, U.S. government must uh, really hate Maine. Yeah, it sounds like it was a dummy round that was investigating this story in the first place. Word pun. You can tell I'm getting punny now because I'm all jacked up on Red Bull. <laughs> Finally, it kicked in. Red oh, Bull. Burning jelly beans. I see a note here that the... The missiles were, in fact, dummy rounds used in a training exercise and being sent back in accordance with the agreement. Huh. And uh, simply, the the manifest didn't reflect that the totally innocent form of transport. It, I mean, it, it seems like this, this story is kind of lame. I feel like your notes are also more helpful than mine. Well, I research things before I talk about them. My note says jelly rancher and dermatologist cat on it. Whatever. Uh, there's a story, something something Walter White didn't see the front of it. Maybe either move the teleprompter back or I'm just going to make shit up. It's too late now, it's live. Hey, by the way, you're tuned into Southern Oregon News Network Live, a rare treat for you and also for us. Once again, I would like to remind you that here on April 15th on tax day, you're lucky to get anything from us that you can get because we are half dead. And guess what? Unlike the rest of you jolly people that don't get paid anything, this broke guy is not even getting a kickback from the government. So I tell you what I'm going to do at the end of the day. I'm going to go outside and cry a little and set my shirt on fire. That's it. That's all I got. Just as long as you don't smoke meth. Meth. Let's talk about meth. We hate meth. We yes. hate meth. Yeah, especially when it shuts down the interstate. Huh. Or when it plays a starring role in inspiring young chemists to become criminals. Wait, didn't we, uh, episode two, I went ahead and said that this guy was a hero of mine. Are we slanderizing him now? Look, let's talk about Walter White once again. Guess what, between that episode and this one, I went and watched a couple of those uh, of shows episodes and Walter White, he's a catch. He isn't real, but early in the morning of March 15th, a 37 year old Medford resident closed down the northbound I-5 for three hours after crashing his truck head into another while high on meth. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. That happened. Jerk. Big time jerk. There's a reason that it's called Methford, people. And the meth, although one of many drugs that causes bloopity bloop to your brain, is also the worst. And I got to tell you, for those of you who are thinking about taking up meth, here's a couple things it does for you. Nope. Don't. Don't. Nope. Don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. First off, funky teeth. Secondly, getting weird, losing weight. Think you're busy, not doing anything useful. Too much weight. Too much weight. Meth, not a drug to make you look attractive or achieve things. That was a, I feel really powerful about our deliverance there. Yeah. By the way, you didn't even mention that I am rocking a Gryffindor tie here. I've got a better one.